It's DC 101. I'm Mike Jones talking today to the two gentlemen, the brains, the stars, the men behind the upcoming documentary. Here I go again. Kyle Kruger, Steve McClure. How you doing, guys? Doing very good, Mike. Thanks. Very good. Very good. So I love the idea of the movie. I don't want to screw this up for anyone that doesn't know. Please explain what exactly Here I Go Again is about. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> well, um, me and Kyle have known each other um, like over 30 years since we were kids. And uh, in the 80s, we had a, uh, a metal band uh, when we were like 17, 18 years old. And um, it never really amounted to much. We, uh, you know, we had a cup. We, we formed some good friendships and, you know, we tried playing music and, you know, um, it just kind of ended abruptly and we all went on with our separate lives. And uh, we just decided now that we're kind of, uh, you know, in our formative years, we'll call it, um, we wanted to give it another shot and see if, uh, see if we can kind of uh, fulfill that dream that we never quite achieved. And I love the fact that you guys had the band name Tricks, uh, the two X's. It seemed like if you were a band in the 80s, you had to have double consonants somewhere, or you couldn't even get up on the stage or even think about it at that point. Yeah, at, at, at that time, you know, plus spelling with a Y, that was pretty much the, the cliche of the day. But I got to tell you, if you check the, the lineup of, of all the people that are in this film, I think we have every single band from that era that had an X in their name in this film. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I okay. We've got all of them now. So it was, let's see, it was Trickster and, uh, okay, I'm yeah, out at that point, but who else? See, we don't have Trickster, so you're incorrect. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're the, the one we don't have. We got Rocks Gang, XYZ. Vixen. Oh, Vixen. Anthrax, very nice. <laughs> and who am I? Kicks. Yep. Helix. Um, so, yeah, I think Trickster is the only one that we're missing. All right, so you guys got to go out there and hunt Trickster down. Now, did did Trix ever get a taste of the rock star life? Was it, was it groupies? Were there, were there drugs? Or was it just you guys practicing some songs, fighting with each other for a little while, and then drinking cheap beer until you passed out? <laughs> Um, you know, I, the success, I guess, is, is relative. I mean, we were 18, 19-year-old kids, and we were doing what we could to play, so we would rent out, like, skating rinks and stuff, but we, we played in front of big crowds. I mean, whenever we did a show, people were really, really into it. I mean, we kind of looked the part. So for success for a kid that age, I think that's the next stepping stone, but that's kind of where it stopped, and yes, on the cheap beer. <laughs> what was the beer of choice back then? Bush. Bush beer. <laughs> Um, now, for the guys that you got to uh, to do the interviews in the movie, now, how did you come up with the list of people? Was this like, okay, these are the dream people we want, like uh, like John Karabi, or or you get Phil Campbell from Motorhead or Kip Winger? How did you guys put that list together and get all these people to do the interviews? Uh, well, we started with, um, yeah, like you said, some of these you know guys that we really um, worshipped growing up, and uh, we wanted to meet, we wanted to be a part of this film, so... Um, like Lillian X was a big influence on us. We used to love listening to them, and, they, and Steve Blaze was our first interview for that. And uh, and then just slowly, you know, the ball just started rolling. We just started contacting more and more people. And um, you know, once one person's on board, you know, it's it's steamrolled from there. And, and people, you know, were coming to us and asking, you know, to be in the film. And it just kind of took off from there. But yeah, we, you know, we're pretty representative of all the uh, all the bands that we grew up listening to. You know, there's a few still out there that remain. But uh, you know, we, we we got a pretty good bunch of them on board. Were there yeah, anyone, no, was anyone turning you down? Like, did anyone just flat out say, no, I'm not doing this, no chance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where do you want to start? <laughs> where um, do you guys want to start? Please, go I, ahead. Well, you know what, uh, before I mention that, um, you'll notice that in the movie, we have a lot of bands from that era, but we kind of stayed away from the, the bands that kind of were able to sustain themselves through the kind of the rough periods, the Death Leopards and the Poisons and the Motley Crews and the Metallicas. We really went for the guys who are kind of going through something similar and reinventing themselves now uh, on a much different level, but similar to, to, to what we are. But we've had people who have been concerned about how they'd be portrayed in the film and therefore decided not to, uh, not to go down that road. And, but more often than not, it's been people just not returning emails. So yeah, or or we get we get hung up with their management and it never quite gets probably to the band in the first place. Yeah, that too. I don't understand how guys from back in the '80s that were using Aquanet by the case and wearing the tightest spandex they could find were thinking that you know they would be misrepresented in the film. I mean, guys, you were wearing you were wearing makeup from Rite Aid, so how can this be any worse than anything you've done before? 
Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's called denial. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when I was watching the trailer for the movie, I saw the comparisons to tricks and Loverboy came up a couple times. I mean, is that really an insult for you guys to be compared to Loverboy? Because everyone on the planet Earth right now knows working for the weekend. I mean, that's not such a bad thing, I would think. Yeah, I mean they're comparing our look. Our, they're comparing our look more than anything. I mean, not, <laughs> um, yeah, that's come up numerous, numerous times. Not just, I mean, more than the than what's in the trailer right now. So I guess we kind of look like that. I don't know. We, you uh, know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you I don't know what? Like though, it at all. So. At, at no, least it wasn't Mike Richard Marks. <laughs> now, wh if Trix does get the opening slot, I mean, you're a hair band. You guys have had uh, time not against your side. You know, the hair is kind of gone. So, what do you do? Do you do do you do wigs? Do you do plugs? Or like some rock stars that I'm not going to mention, would you do bandanas with the hair that's already <laughs> attached to it and go out there and sell that to the crowd? Um. You know, I actually grew my hair back out for, oh. for this whole thing. And uh, Steve has uh, got a shaved head, but it still works. You know what I mean? We're not, look, we're not going to be throwing the, the spandex back on. We're not going to be wearing zebra prints or anything. We're going to put something together that's going to have, musically have that influence, but I, it, we're going to present it for a, for a modern audience that's, you know, consumable for, for everybody, I think. Um, so the, the image is is going is a bit different. I mean, uh, it's it's toned down quite a bit, that's for sure. But uh, there's still some long hair floating around. Three out of the five, in fact, uh, if we can get everybody in the same room. And Steve, I saw that you were uh, you were concerned about not being able to play the guitar because you hadn't picked it up in a long time. I guess along the way, while you guys were traveling, did you pick it back up? Were you getting things together again, learning the chords and everything? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like riding a bike. So, um, no, that, and that makes and that makes Kyle mad. So that's why. I, <laughs> Stop, that like, Stop saying that. Uh, no, I ended up buying a guitar, and uh, yeah, so I've been uh, I've been practicing. Mm -hmm. So I'll be ready. All right, and and I heard oh. Kyle, you said that uh, you know if you can get the other guys back together. So um, there was no question about getting hired guns or anything like studio musicians. You wanted to get the original tricks and do it one more time. Yeah, that, I mean that's for me personally. That's the whole reason. There was a there was a chemistry with that group of guys, and we had we were onto something. We didn't fully develop it; it wasn't fully realized, but we were onto something. And I would like to to see if that chemistry uh, is still there. You know, otherwise it's just another band, as far as I'm concerned. Well, you just need to bring along the case of Bush beer, and you'll be good to go. Oh yeah, that's gonna that that changes everything. Yeah, <laughs> whole new dynamic happens there. Whole new, but then it's right back to the same old stuff. <laughs> um, exactly. And and with the movie, you guys have financed this all on your own. Like you've put every dollar you've had into this thing because I guess it's not just doing a film for you guys. This is a labor of love, and this is something you just had to tell the world and share with us. Yeah, we're not we're not working right now. I mean, we we have gotten to the point where we have to focus on this 100, percent and there's no paycheck coming in. We laid it all out on the line for this, but you know what's what's coming forth. Uh, hopefully, is going to help us finish the the film, and we're going to look to we're going to go to the people for that. With the uh, with the Kickstarter's campaign that's starting up next month, you want to tell us about that, Kyle? Yeah, um, essentially uh, on February fourth, we're going live with a Kickstarter campaign, and our goal is to raise enough money. Uh, to be able to finish the film and get it uh, where it needs to go. And, you know, this movie was founded and is seeded in social media. We, from day one, we, we had a Facebook page, and we grew it one by one. And that's the way we're going to finish this. We started it that way. We're going to finish it that way. Um, what's cool is we got a lot of the bands in the film that are on board with us who are donating some items um, as kind of rewards for people who make a contribution towards the film. Um, and there'll be different kind of levels of which, you know, if you donate $50, you'll be able to get this. If you donate $100, you'll be able to get that. Um, but we've got a lot of cool cool stuff that, that, that we're looking at. Um, and we want to make sure that everybody gets something out of this, but most importantly that they're engaged and they have ownership of what it is that we're, we're trying to do because it is everybody's movie. And we can find the information about Kickstarters at the website, of course. Yeah, uh, we'll have a splash page up in the next uh, week and a half that's going to uh, tell you exactly how to get to Kickstarter and everything that you need to know. Very cool, very cool. Now, uh, Kyle, Steve, what's been the most rewarding part of making the movie so far for you guys? Mm, that's a good question. 
Uh, probably just to meet and hang out with all these guys that, you know, we used to sneak in and see in clubs and go to concerts and, you know, buy their tickets, buy their albums. We, you know, haul ass after uh, high school to go to the record store and pick up some of these, you know, albums from our favorite artists. And now, you know, we're taking pictures with them, we're interviewing them, they're being cool to us, you know, we're calling them on the phone. And, and I don't know, it's just been really cool to kind of meet a lot of these guys and just uh, – and see how really kind of just generous and, and amicable they, they they really are. That's that's been cool for me. Yeah, I, I would say the same. And we formed some really really great friendships through this. Uh, in particular, uh, Ron Keel. Um, from the time we've interviewed him up until now, we've just become really really great friends. And that's that's something because I mean I I, I was in a band after Tricks where we did a whole set of Keel material, which sounds insane, but it, but it's true. And he was just a personal hero of mine, and to, to be uh, that connected to him now is, is fantastic. But the opportunity to go back to the well and, and and write music and record it and get it out there again, I mean, that's that's the the thing that thrills me the most, is, is just having that opportunity. One last question before I let you guys go. Have tricks, have you guys worked on a signature move when you're on stage, like <laughs> the Gene Simmons tongue flick or or sliding on your knees like Springsteen did at the Super Bowl? What's the move that Trix is going to have? Uh, probably just um, not running out of air and being able to actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually to, to to the <laughs> <laughs> Making it yeah. through the set. That'll be all yeah. you need. That's yeah, the signature, the signature move is called Survival. Yeah. <laughs> Here I Go Again is the name of the film. Kyle Kruger, Steve McClure, the guys behind it. Go to their website. Check out the Kickstarter campaign. It's going to go up live in a week and a half. HereIGoAgain.com. Follow them on Twitter at Here I Go Again Doc and on Facebook.com slash Here I Go Again. Kyle, Steve, been great talking to you. I can't wait to see the movie. When are we thinking it's coming out? Looking at the summer, man. We're hoping. We're okay. hoping. It well, all let's, depends on the Kickstarter. Very good. Well, let's look for it in the summer. And everyone, check out Here I Go Again .com. See the trailer. Know about the Kickstarter's campaign. Gentlemen, I wish you luck with the film. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike.